I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, and I'm joined today across the table, our Assistant Director of Engineering, Joe Thielen, and fellow marketeer, Judd Jarzinka. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you, Seth. Glad yeah. to be here. Excited to sit in here. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty exciting topic. And before we get to the topic, I do want to make mention that it's still trade show season. We just wrapped up the Dallas Safari Club show, and you want to talk about a group of people that turn up and turn out at a trade show. The state of Texas, the amount of participation of shooting and hunting in that state, if they only allowed Texas residents in that show, you'd still have a full show. <laughs> it's, uh, it was great to see all these people and uh, to hear the stories, interact with them, people bringing wildcat cartridges over for us to look at and photos and videos of hunting and using our product. And it was just great. And, uh, you know, we were just talking before recording about Sundays, usually a really slow day. Well, it was Sunday it was a slow day. A gentleman and his uh, two kids, he had a daughter and a son with him. I think his name was uh, Michael Green comes to mind. Um, just stopped to, you know, hey, love the podcast, love uh, your products. And, you know, they showed some photos and of them and their his kids. They had this one pig that they shot the night before. And it looked like, you know, in the 1950s, how you'd have a diner with checkerboard flooring. The, the pig was like a yellow and black checkerboard. It would make really? a cool oh, pair of wow. boots. Uh, but the kids were super excited to to use the products and be out there hunting. And he took them to Hawaii and they were shooting Axis deer. And wow. uh, they were just so excited about getting out there with their dad and just using our products. And that's the kind of interactions I love having at these trade shows. So we got SHOT Show coming up, Safari Club International in Nashville coming up. And we'll end the year with the NRA show, which is a couple months out now. But for the listener. If you're at these shows or if they're close, just come to the show. It's a great time and, and we love to hear from you. Yeah. That's one reason when I go to those shows, why I do this and I enjoy doing it. When you design and build products and people come back and tell you, thank you, appreciate that. I've used this on a hunt or a shoot or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's rewarding. It gives you some career satisfaction. So that's one of the reasons why I do it for all the people out there that enjoy using our product. That's awesome. I just like it to BS. That's yes. what I'm about. Yeah. yeah. You can't BS to BS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. You get to sit at the booth and get paid and talk hunting, talk shooting. Yeah. It, it's pretty awesome. Yes, like it is. Lot. And within the, the Dallas Fart Club show, you know, Judd kind of spurred this topic here because of the show. You know, we get a lot of questions from podcast at hornady.com, people submitting tickets online, just people reaching out to us all over the place, Facebook, whatever. Well, at this show, we got this question a lot, and you know, Judd's handled this question before, as we all have, and it's, you got three PRCs, you got a 6.5, you got a 7, you got the big 300. Well, how do you pick one? Why do you pick one? Do you need to pick one? Can I have two? I think you should have all three. What's, uh, what are some of the parameters why one person might choose one over the other? And we get that question a lot, and there's a lot of nuance to that answer. And so I thought maybe we'd set the stage here a little bit uh, about how we're going to approach this, this question, maybe talk about the merits and maybe some of the potential, I don't want to call them shortcomings, but some of the trade-offs of each caliber. And then we can dive into systematically why you might choose one over the other. Sure. And of course, there's plenty of overlap. So to get there first, you have one guy on the show incredibly biased. And that is me. So you'll hear that championing for one cartridge over all others from me. Then you have Pontius Joe Thielen. Whatever, everything's fine. Just choose whatever you want to choose. They're all great or whatever. Well, they this is a great topic because if you went to hunting camp and sat around the fire and posed this question, you would have different answers from everybody. Yep. And that's what makes it fun. I mean, we'll dive into some of the, the numbers and this and that, but... Uh, yeah, this will be fun. It's yeah. a fun thing to talk about. So you got Bias Seth, Pontius Joe, and then you have in the market, money in the pocket, ready to burn, Judd, <laughs> yeah. who's well, been on the fence for a while. Well, I think my biggest thing that I kept getting hung up on or, you know, just keep debating on is, you know, what parameters do I want this cartridge to, to function in as far as the firearm goes? You know, right now, I'm on the mindset of I want lightweight, I want somewhat of a shorter barrel uh and i don't 
want a lot of recoil for what I'm going to do right now, but I'm interested, yeah, to hear about it all. And I've always been a seven millimeter guy. I yeah. shot a, a seven mag for a chunk of years and I still get it from these guys that I pass that rifle down on the road, but I shouldn't have done that. No. Well, it's a good thing you did because now you're in the market. Yeah, for that's a true. There you go. Yep. So, I uh, got rid of my seven mag too, and I grew up shooting seven mag yeah. too. Seth, so. All right. Well, and, and Judd, that's a good point and we'll get to it here, but you know, your background and what you do for hunting, it's exactly what we're going to talk about in how you pare down the selection where, you know, we're outdoorsmen. We do a lot of stuff outdoors. We were talking ice fishing. We were upland hunters, archers, you know, Judd, you do a lot in the archery world and, you know, it's primarily deer, antelope, mule deer, something like that. Maybe the occasional elk or something bigger. So for you, there's, you know, less big game requirement or really big game. Uh, and again, I'm excited to talk about it. So let's get started with just kind of walking through some of the highlights and we'll just walk through, start with the 6.5, then go to the 300, and then goes to the large cartridge, which is the 7 PRC. No, <laughs> I'm just I love kidding. how he saved that one for a last. Yeah, we'll go 6.5, 7, 300, and just talk t- about some of the merits and then some of the potential trade-offs uh, as you're making this decision, and then we'll kind of finish up by painting picture. So to start off with, uh, the 6.5 came before the 300, correct? Correct. All right, so you have the... In a roundabout way. In a, well, <laughs> I mean, depending if... It came to Sammy. It came to... There you go. Yeah, because yes. the 300 is the founder of the feast for all of them. Yep. Okay, but so the 6.5, I believe it was 2019 or 2018. Might 18, have been 18. Uh, for the 6.5 PRC. And Joe, walk us through what was the design criteria, what you were trying to achieve, and then we can look at some of the performance specs of the 6.5. The 6.5 PRC was built to launch those heavier 6.5 bullets with more velocity Mm -hmm. and still maintain accuracy, uh, temperature, stability, efficiency, fit in a magazine, standard 532 bolt face, all of those things. It was just, it's for the guy that wanted to hunt or shoot longer range targets to get him, to give him more boiler room. Yeah. And to stay not so grossly overbore uh, with some of the other. Like the really long ones. Yeah. And I think one of the things that highlighted here for me was the 6.5 PRC was you had guys, you included, running 6.5 284s to the gills, loaded up, yes. hot, launching bullets fast, and there's just a better way to do that, and that was a yeah. magnum bolt face. Yeah, you had a re- 6.5 rebated rim. They did not have quite the powder. You were standing on them pretty hard, mm-hmm. um, fitting them, getting long bullets to fit in a magazine with the case length and everything. It just didn't marry up very well. Yeah. Awesome. And the, not to mention the cartridge case sucked to make because you had to head turn it twice with the rebated rim. It just, oh yeah, you knew right away that's just not an elegant way to solve this problem. So you guys, the engineering team, solved it with the 6.5 PRC and convenient timing because right around 2015 and shortly thereafter, we had the 143 ELDX bullet and the 147 ELD match and then the juggernaut, the 153A tip. And you really designed a cartridge to spit those things out at an appreciable velocity with not being too grossly overboard that you're sacrificing efficiency and you're fire breathing and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you're blowing half the powder out the end of the barrel. You got to have a 26 inch barrel to burn it all, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Awesome. So oh, I kind of forgot about the match implications of that cartridge. Wasn't George Gardner involved yep. in that? In the yeah, that was, one of, that was one of the, one of the, I want to say legs of the stool, so to speak, is the, the SOM, short action ultramag. You just couldn't, it wasn't supported very well, still not. So George is like, look, I, I want to do this because I've been using this over here with the Psalm and it works pretty good. I need your guys' help. And we were just so busy to start with, couldn't do it. And then mm-hmm. we got, we got around to it essentially and 6.5 PRC was born. It's, yeah. And plenty of match application. Joe, I know you've shot 153 A-tips yep. uh, out of a PRC in the PRS world. Got some ELR applications. So some of the highlights here, you have efficient and and thoughtful design which you're going to find in all the prcs and a big one here i think is the moderate recoil compared to how much performance downrange you're really getting uh that precision hunter load in a quick calculation the 10 pound gun it's going to be running about 16 foot pounds of recoil which as we start talking about some of the bigger ones is pretty modest so they're going to get half again more or double that yep yep. So, so you've got Low recoil, which is important, Judd, for, you know, one of your criteria, right? Well, and I would take it even the step further. Out of the PRC line, 6.5 PRC can fit in a good amount of short action. 
So okay. to me, weight wise of the rifle, that's a pretty big ticket for me right there. Just yeah, you can bring right everything up. down, and in the heat of the moment, you got less chance of short stroke in a bolt. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I have I have a my hunting six five PRC is an eight pound gun oh, with yeah. a scope on it. Yep. So that's and sixteen a, foot pounds of recoil with the short stroke. It is a lot of performance in an awesome lightweight. I mean, I can carry that gun all day for weeks. I mean, it's just it's a breeze. What yeah. do you have on there for a barrel? And how long? It's a carbon barrel. It's like twenty five inch carbon. Mm. Twenty five inch. I did because that's Doo-boo-boo. before before we knew what we oh. know now. I mean, yeah, cans and stuff. Email, but I'm just early on. It was like a prototype. That's yeah. What, so that's what I had. So what that's we know, what I built. What we know now. What would you? Go for barrel length on a 6.5 PRC hunting rifle. Hunting rifle? 22, 23. 22, yep. Put that suppressor on I there. I mean, and then put a can on. Yeah, absolutely. What about 20? Uh, 20, I mean, you're going to get, you're going to sacrifice a start to sacrifice a little bit of performance because 6.5 is neck down so much that you, you're forced to use slower burning propellants. So you need, you do need, technically, you need a little bit more barrel to burn out those slower propellants. It's just a volume to bore ratio. Whereas when we get to the other ones up here, those powders are going to get a little bit faster because the, the bore opens up so you can, yeah. you know, get by with a little so, bit shorter barrel. So what I'm, he- what I'm hearing here is if I do a 6.5 PRC, I'm going to have to go with a 22-inch barrel. So now that means I have to get a 5-inch can. My 7-inch is going to be too long. I so think you need to get the 5-inch can. But you need the 5-inch can anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Let me just yeah. play devil's advocate. I have the 5-inch can and I have the 20-inch PRC and it's yeah excellent day. I uh, love that combination, but just look at some quick performance criteria. You know, at 200 yards, it's a laser beam, practically no wind. Uh, out of the muzzle, that factory precision hunter load is doing 2960. So you've got all kinds of speed, plenty of energy, uh, plenty of velocity. By the time you get out to 500, in a 10 mile an hour full value wind, you've got just under 12 inches of wind drift, um, got just under 40 inches of drop. And you're still holding on to a little over 2,200 feet per second of velocity with 1,600 foot-pounds of energy. You stretch it out to the half mile, 800 yards with the Precision Hunter ammo, looking at 33 inches of wind, 140 inches of drop. You still got 1,850 feet per second for velocity and just over 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. So plenty of uh, velocity and energy for deer and antelope size gain uh, at extended ranges and Let's talk about this for a minute before we change the other cartridge. Six fives on elk. We get a lot of people that don't like that uh, that that thought, and mm-hmm. it's generally if you press them a little bit. It's not because of any uh, bad experience or anything else. It's just it doesn't make them feel warm and fuzzy. So I can't shoot a six five on an elk. So Joe, I'd like to hear how you answer that question because Judd might be in that boat one day. Um. So me and my family have shot multiple elk with. 6.5 PRC and a Creedmoor. And what I would say is moving back, you know, 20, 30 years when projectile design and construction wasn't as good as it is today, I, I might agree with that. Be like, yeah, step it up a little bit. But the bullets that we have today are constructed so well and they're so efficient, tough, expand, penetrate, mm-hmm. all of those things that as long as you make a good shot and that goes with any cartridge. I mean, you'll hear us say that, or me say that, especially like you need to be able to put the bullet where the bullet needs to go and then it will handle the rest. Yep. So shooting an elk with a six, five, you need to be a good marksman, know your limits, but it uh, absolutely adequate for that. Excellent. And yeah, I think you know your limits with range. You definitely 100%. don't want to be stretching legs too far. Or the wind or the wind is really blowing or I'm not on a good rest or whatever yeah. it is. Just make sure you know that and don't take the shot. Get get a little closer or move or wait till tomorrow or whatever it is. Yep. So, Would you lean one way or another on your bullet selection uh, in the PRC 6.5? So you're going to probably hear me say a lot on this podcast, depending on whether it's these cartridges, bullets, whatever. We got to know what we're doing. Like what is the task at hand? What is the job to do? And then I tell people all the time, what is the job? What are you doing? And then we will go decide what tool out of the toolbox we're going we're gonna to take. Mm-hmm. I think a great tool in that toolbox, if you're trying to shoot an elk with a 6.5, is that 130CX. That's probably the best one. That's the best tool. Yeah, we used 143s. Mm-hmm. Which is really good. Which yeah. is a good tool. Had good luck. But the CX is going to give you that edge on penetration. It's going to make up for a little bit um, of air in your shot placement. Mm-hmm. Because it's so, just a little bit more robust of a it's bullet. It's a 
little tougher. Yep. yep. And that's one of the things I really like about not not the 6.5, but really about our product lineup. Like you mentioned, Joe, you've got a toolbox full of tools. You don't have to use the screwdriver as the pry bar. We've got a pry bar. 100%. And Absolutely. that CX just allows you that, that edge of, you know, the lead court bullets. They're great for a lot of things, but if you're close range shots or maybe a bigger, tougher animal, swap to that CX yep. and you can really punch above your weight class with that. Yep. Follow-up shots. So, yeah. Yep. See, I would give that, to answer your question, CX is number one, followed up by 143. Yeah. Well, I would even go one step farther for me where I'm buying ammo. I'm buying factory mm-hmm. loaded ammunition. So the CX, the other, my thought process, whether it is or whether, whether it isn't, but this is my, this is my ultimate, this is my go-to rifle for hunting is what it would be. So I'm almost drawn to the outfitter line of ammo too, just because of the nickel plated cases, waterproof, waterproof right. sealed case mouth and uh primers. So that that's yeah. another factor for me to consider just just set it and forget it this is what my load is yeah you brought up a really good really good point and all of these cartridges have match outfitter and precision hunter mm-hmm. so i mean it's kind of a moot point here but you bring up a very good point going to do the job you better not just look at the cartridge and the bullet look at what you can purchase yeah. and what's available 100 yep. percent. good point and uh, like you mentioned we do have the match ammo 6.5 prc that 147 doing 2910 at the muzzle and, uh, you know, for the PRS crowd or just banging steel practicing, that's an awesome, awesome yeah. option. Yeah. So six, five, huge versatility, moderate recoil, nice flat trajectory, efficient bullets in a, in a good case design. That's not too overboard that cause problems. Find the latest shirts, hats, hoodies, and accessories that you see here on the podcast and much more at HornadyGear.com. So stepping up from that, you've got from 6.5 to 7. It's just a few thousand of an inch bigger, but it can make a big difference. You graduate to a bigger case, longer case, more propellant, a um, little bit more velocity, not a ton, but much heavier bullets. With a heavier bullet, you're going to get some added recoil. So when we jump to the 7 from the 6.5, you're going to pick up roughly 7 foot-pounds of recoil. 7, 8 foot-pounds, depending on what you're shooting, you're going to go from 15, 16 to 22, 23 foot pounds of recoil with the seven. Um, but you're going to be with the seven, you're going to be a little bit flatter at every range. You're going to have a little bit less wind, a little more retained velocity, and, and a little bit more energy. Quite a, quite a quite bit, a more, bit energy. more energy. Mm-hmm. So if that's a thing for you, you know, the seven, it takes advantage of really kind of a sweet spot in bullet design where it's big enough in diameter and you can make these really long bullets that get really efficient. And the longer you make a lead core bullet, the heavier it gets. And you can end up with some mass, specifically our Precision Hunter, 175 grain bullet. If you look at our match ammo, the, in my opinion, one of the best bullets we manufacture is that 180 grain ELD match, just from a drag perspective. That's um, phenomenal. These things are very, very tough to beat and uh, incredible drag performance, accurate, obviously. And you're still going to be doing, depending on your barrel length, 2,900 to maybe 3,000 feet per second. These really, really efficient bullets. Um, catch 22, you do have a little bit more recoil. But for the hunter, that's maybe primarily elk or, you know, elk every other year, something like that. This is just a little bit bigger bullet or a little bit bigger game going a little faster. Yep. Um, looking at some numbers here to compare it in the precision hunter line, right, to the 6.5. Um, at 200 yards, just like the 6.5, it's a laser beam. Um, it does have a substantial energy difference, uh, even as close as 200 yards. A um, little over 2,700 feet per second retained and 2,800 foot-pounds of energy. 500 yards, again, we're a little flatter, a little bit better in the wind. Uh, 2,300 feet per second of retained velocity and a little over 2,100 foot-pounds retained. By the time you get to that half mile, we are... 29 inches of wind in a 10 mile an hour wind, 131 inches of drop, which is uh, nine inches less than the 6.5. Um, you've got almost 2,000 feet per second of velocity, and you've got a little over 1,500 foot pounds of energy. So, well within the performance window of that ELDX bullet. Yeah. And again, you're going to hear this pretty much all of these are laser beam. They are frozen ropes, and that's a good problem to have. Um, Like you mentioned uh, earlier with the Outfitter ammo, we designed a bullet specifically for each one of these PRCs 
in the CX world. The 6.5, that 130 grain CX, you can use it in a Creedmoor, you can use it in some other stuff, but it was designed for that 6.5 PRC. And just like that, our 7 is a 160 grain bullet. Now, for those out there that might think, oh, 160, that sounds pretty light, that baby is a hammer. And anytime you take lead out and replace it with copper, it's not going to be very heavy, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. And this has the same shape or similar shape to that 180 grain match bullet with that long o jive and that long boat tail, but you got the monolithic material. So if you are going to stretch this thing out on something like a brown bear or elk or something, you know, the kudu, elon, something like that, that CX is just brutal. It is an awesome bullet. Uh, last summer, I was had the opportunity to go to Africa. Me and my buddy I was hunting with, both shooting seven PRCs, both 20-inch barrels. I was shooting ELDX. He was shooting CX. We had one-shot kills on almost every animal. Uh, several animals just drop in their tracks, which is kind of unusual for some of the bigger planes game. Um, and I have to say, as much of an ELDX fan as I am, if I get to go back to Africa with the 7, I think that 160 CX is the bullet, personally. Yeah. Well, I think all the CXs when you come to shooting planes game over there, and we've said that before on these podcasts, they are just, they're awesome. Yep. From a hunting standpoint, they are machines. Yep. Awesome. And jumping over to that match ammo, you have that 180 grain bullet, which is one of the most efficient bullets that we manufacture uh, and is in box ammo. So, you know, obviously the A-tips. Yeah. You know, those, but the 180 might, man, it it's is. It's close. It's it, within two or three percent of that being, A-tip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is very efficient. The shape is really efficient on that projectile. Yep. So that one's awesome. So for the ELR crowd, you know, we can we have some numbers we can talk about. But out to a mile, you're not going to outrun the 7 PRC with a 180. I don't care what you're shooting. No, it's, the, you're the, gonna number, hit, the numbers are the numbers. You're going to get there with less wind, with less drop, yep. and uh, that's and more retained velocity. For it's that just matter. amazing because, well, you can get, yeah, so you get that 180 green bullet out of the blocks a little faster. And then nothing can ever catch it because nope. it's so efficient. Can't, uh, I mean, love it. <laughs> it leads the race from wire to wire. Yeah, mm. it really does. So, and, so between the two, the 6.5 PRC and the 7 PRC, I mentioned the 20 inch barrel mm-hmm. earlier. Would I get more distance energy wise downrange yeah, with the just, 7 PRC? Just because the so bullet I maybe is. Maybe stretch it a little farther? You could because you just have a heavier bullet that's a little more efficient than the other one just because of the, the ratios. You know, it's a little heavier, mm-hmm. a little longer. So yes, well, absolutely. that's a consideration then to make. Yeah. Yeah, it is that although, you know, if you put them with the same barrel length and you reduce the velocity, just a slightly more efficient bullet with just a little bit more Perfect. velocity, it's hmm. just going to, like you said, it's going to win from wire to right. wire. Yep. And so to highlight the seven here before we move on to the big 300, the seven, in my opinion, heavily biased. <laughs> it really bridges the gap between the six, five, which is an awesome cartridge, but may be on the smaller side for some things um, and, and for some folks. And it bridges that between 6.5 and the 30, which we're going to talk about here, where the 300 PRC is the 12-pound sledgehammer. No, it's Thor's hammer. It's Thor's the, hammer. Yeah, and, right. you know, sometimes you need the, the you know, the 20-ounce hammer. Sometimes you need a 24-ounce yeah, frame, or sometimes you need Thor's hammer. And I really think that the, the 7 PRC, if you're reaching for a tool in the toolbox, is about as versatile of a hammer as you can get you've got a huge variety of bullets aftermarket support you got other manufacturers making it of course uh plenty of hand loading potential there factory ammo is great it's big enough to do the big jobs but not too big that you wouldn't use it for some of the smaller jobs too yeah that's a fair that's a fair assessment yep i think it's that's the reason that I uh, I have so much bias. Hornady V-Match Ammunition. Loaded exclusively with Hornady ELD VT bullets. The low drag design of the ELD VT bullets provide high velocity retention and minimal wind deflection. Initial offerings include 22 arc, 6 arc, 6 millimeter Creedmoor, 6.5 Grendel, and 6.5 Creedmoor. Elevate your varmint shooting experience, shatter records, and make your mark like never before with V-Match ammunition from Hornady. But I do have to say, there's something magical that I don't know what it is about a big 30. There is something intangible about shooting a big 30, whether you're shooting groups on steel at a mile or you're shooting an elk at 450 yards. 
there's something to be said that I can't put my finger on about a big 30. That's because it's, that's because it's three zero. Yeah. It's American made. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. So let's look at the 300 PRC right out of the gate. You know, we're comparing kind of largely the precision hunter ammo from skew to skew, but, um, you're going to take a, a pretty substantial jump in recoil, you know, from six, five to seven, we jump, you know, maybe six, seven, eight foot pounds. You're going to take that same jump from seven to 300. So now you're looking at, you know, 15, 16 foot pounds of difference between a 6.5 PRC and a 300. So, you know, Judd, earlier you talked about lightweight, shorter barrels. That 300 is going to let you know you pulled the trigger. And if you yep. make a really light gun, you know, you end up with the old scope, scope ring. ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but looking at it here, uh, get that big recoil again at 200. It's a laser beam at 500 yards. Um, it's really, uh, it's going to be a little bit more drop at every range than the other two cartridges we talked about simply because it's leaving the muzzle a little bit slower. Um, not by much, and these bullets are super efficient, so it's going to hold on to all that velocity, but it's going to be a couple inches uh, more drop at 500. Um, and here in this case, gosh, it's a little over a foot compared to the 7 and about 8 inches less, or excuse me, uh, more drop than the 6.5 at 800 yards. But at every range, if you're trying to put energy on target, not much is going to do it like a big 300 PRC. You know, by the time you stretch the legs and the velocity bleeds off quite a bit, that 7 is going to sneak up and eventually pass it. But out to that 7-800 yard line, um, you have a advantage of energy. And we know that energy is energy. It's a function of how much retained velocity you have. And it doesn't mean anything if you can't expand the bullet. So, Correct. Uh, but out to 800 yards, and these numbers are all ran with the standard ICAO atmosphere. So that's 29.9 inches of mercury, zero feet above sea level at 59 degrees, which not many people are hunting in sure. that exact environment because it just, it's hard to duplicate in some places. But it's still all relative, right? Yeah. I yep. mean, these are all apples to apples here. Yep. So if you're trying to put a big payload on a target, that 300 PRC is is definitely going to want the one to do it. And then you look at the CX here. Um, there's there's about as much versatility in a 190 CX out of a 300 PRC. Anything on the continent, quite literally, and most everything else on any other continent. That bullet, so robust. It's the same or similar shape as our 212 ELDX, 225 ELD match. But that monolithic material, the thing is the size of my pinky finger and it's accurate and out of the muzzle at a blistering 3,000 feet per second, that right there, in my opinion, if I was the 300 PRC shooter, I'm taking the 190CX every time. Yeah, for doing a lot of different things, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. For hunting big, I'm talking big, heavy game, like yeah. minus take away dangerous, dangerous game stuff because obviously not legal in most areas. But yeah. anyway, yeah, any type of hoofed yeah. animal bears, yeah. it's... Was, it's there. There was a, a, a hunt going on. Um, some of my friends in the industry got to go up and shoot a grizzle bear up in Alaska. And they were taking 300 PRCs with my gentle prodding. And uh, there, was, there was one individual in particular that showed some reservation at first. And uh, they took 300 PRCs. They took 190 CXs. And I've got a trophy shot of every single one of them with their bear. I've got videos of how the hunts went down, and you want to talk about a, that? Those bears didn't know what hit them, and they were dead in a darn hurry. That 190CX, incredibly effective, and you know, for those that go up to Kodiak to hunt Sitka, I've got a lot of friends that take the 300 PRC. One, the Sitka deer, from what I understand, I haven't hunted them. They're pretty darn dense for a deer. Mm -hmm. It's like a mule deer body density on antelope legs and so they're a lot more dense than you might think but if you're hunting in a highly populated brown or grizzly bear area having that 300 prc for your medium size gain might be something to consider as well sure absolutely we yeah. talked about barrel length here a little bit uh with the six five and the seven with the 300 joe what do you think uh, you know we always like to strap cans onto stuff how does that uh, involve the 300 well these loads that we have here are obviously this is all generated on a 24, which a 24 is a, a really good barrel length for a 30. Yep. It's really, really good. 
and plus or minus an inch or two from 24 is all about the same from the testing that we've done. Okay. So you so can get away with the 23 yeah, if you're doing You custom. can do a 20 inch barrel, but man, 20 inch barrel on a 300 and now it's just, it becomes a handful in a hurry, mm-hmm. you know, like we've talked. Yep. So. Well, and jumping over to the match ammo, that's a 225 grain ELD match. Incredibly capable, shoots incredibly well. And, you know, uh, we talked about the 7PRC outrunning virtually all the others to that one mile mark if you're an mm-hmm. ELR guy. And it does. It, the 7 with the 180, it outruns it. However, that is where some of that intangible stuff I was talking about, having shot groups at a mile or 2,000 yards with the 7 and with the 300, there's just something about shooting a big 30 when you're shooting groups at long long range that I don't know what it is. One, you can see a little bit more of where your bullet landed, whether you hit or didn't hit. There's just more stuff going on when it reaches the target. Yep. And two, I've been able to shoot better groups at longer ranges with a big 30. Yeah, there's something about moving that. Once you get that big, heavy bullet going in that direction, mm-hmm. it wants to stay moving in that direction. Yeah. I, I equate it to, always have the conservation of momentum principle, and it's MV instead of MV squared for energy. Okay. So it's muzzle velocity or mass times velocity, and instead of one half MV squared, we're squaring the velocity term uh, for the energy, it's momentum, conservation yeah. of momentum. Move something in a direction, it wants to stay in that direction unless pushed yeah. off by something else. And, and if you you've got more mass, you just don't push them exactly. You just don't push them around as easily. That's interesting. So they all have plenty of merit. They're all super capable. So now let's really get into, you got to, you got to do it. You got to do the cutting somewhere. Judd, maybe we'll let you lead this conversation. (laughs) You got to do some cutting somewhere and let's talk about maybe what's right for you. And then we'll hit what's right in, in some different scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. So I guess first, I don't know if we mentioned this at the start, but, uh, they're all the same bolt face, correct? All the PRC cartridges? Yep, 532, 532 Magnum. Yep. Okay, so that's that bolt face. And then you break it down. The 6.5 PRC can fit in short action. So the 7 and the 300 are then long action. Uh, yeah, my right now, my preference is, and yeah, I guess I'll lead that with, to me, that there is so much that's subjective. It's just personal preference. It is, yeah. Sure. That... You know, to me, I think my mind is working. I want lightweight, as in I know you could build any of those rifles lightweight, but just a short action is, is pulling me right now. So I lean to the 6.5 PRC for that, and then also just what I'm hunting. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a guy that's, you know, I'll shoot a coyote if I have the opportunity, and then antelope, mule deer, whitetail, that type of size of a, a, a deer size game is, is what I'm hunting nine times out of 10, if not more. So that's your task at hand. Yeah. And then, you know, I want a rifle that, you know, I'll always be open to building another one or buying another one, but you know, I may go on an elk hunt, hopefully Mm -hmm. one time in 10 years. I don't know. I've I've hunted, I'm 32 years old and I've hunted elk once. So, you know, elk Seven magged him. Yeah. And I did seven (laughs) mag him. So it's not, you know, I am day in, day out deer hunter, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing is, yeah, I, I also am an opportunist. When I see a coyote running outside the house, I'm grabbing the closest rifle I can get to. So <laughs> six, five PRCs there, I'm grabbing it, which I wouldn't slow down with a seven or a 300 either, but you know, <laughs> you just might feel it a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And, and that's another thing, like you said, me, and maybe it's just a mental thing, but I shoot quite a bit, not near as much as I would like to, but I haven't mastered the recoil management yet. So I just, I'm, I'm pulled to the six, five, a little less mm-hmm. recoil compared to the others. So yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, I'm well, drawn a, to that six, five yeah. PRC and I'm really interested in the, the CX load. I think that would be my, my go-to. Yeah. Well, that's a great but, way to, to pare it down. You've got, okay. I'm started with the game, you know, these yep. are the game I'm killing primarily. So what's the, you know, the smallest tool for the job that's going to be the least intrusive. Well, the six, five will do that every day twice on sunday manageable recoil uh and that recoil paired with a very light firearm um that you're not going to want to build an eight pound 300 prc because it's going to be a little bit more lightning than you probably care to ride so you could build a shorter barrel moderate recoil lightweight platform quick handling 
and then more than capable of killing really everything that you have on the docket. And that's a, it's unfortunate you made the wrong decision, but it's still a good, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, for this year, next no, year, no. it's, it's a whole nother build. I'm yeah. just kidding with you on, on all jokes aside, there is so much versatility when you enter that CX world for shooting that bigger game for exactly the reasons you described. I think that's really a kind of an ideal cartridge choice. Yeah. Well, let's flip that around a little bit. You're hunting deer sized game nine times out of 10. What about the people that are hunting elk every year? Or, you know, you know, maybe they're not going on a big trophy hunt every year, but they live in a state where they're afforded the opportunity to get a cow tag filled freezer once a year, every year. Uh, and generally if you're hunting late season cows, there's a lot of eyes on you. And so sometimes you can't get up to that 200 yard line to shoot a cow because you've got 200 sets of eyes watching you. Uh, so Joe walk through somebody in that situation. Maybe they're uh, primarily out West elk is on the menu every year. Sure. How would you break down, um, you know, the cartridges to make a selection? So again, that was a great way to lay it out. The task at hand, right? I live out West. I go, I hunt for meat for my family and that primarily comes from elk. Okay. Focus on that. But I may draw a mule deer tag and I may draw an antelope tag or sheep tag, sheep, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I may draw that other tag. And I would tell that guy, go with your primary focus here, the elk. So get a seven or a 300 because you can kill an antelope or a deer with a seven or a 300, the same as you can with a six, five. It will accomplish that job mm-hmm. just the same, you know, dead is dead as we say. Yep. So if you're hunting elk, I would definitely steer towards a seven or a 300. Of those two, we went through the numbers, they're tit for tat. I mean, you, there that comes down to what do you want? What do you want your rifle to look like, feel like, all of those things. Yeah. And then obviously- Are you backpacking it in might be a- 100%. If you're backpacking it in, then you want it, then the edge would, I would give the edge to the seven because you can. Barrel length can be a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter weight. You can do all of those things- uh, and get the same performance as a 30. Mm-hmm. But if you're like me and you like 30 cal, then you just have a 300. Yeah. So, I mean, it, those two are, you know, one and the same to me from a performance, from the ammunition and bullet performance standpoint, they are both so good. You can't go wrong with either one of them. That's a good it, place to be in. Yeah. hundred percent. As you were talking about that, the, the thing that popped into my mind, just from my hunting experiences in the way, you know, I'm thinking public land here for elk. And you went out with Preston and kind of saw the same thing. I know Jaden has stories too, where, you know, this may be the only shot you have. Hey, I've, I've walked for five days and this is the one elk I saw. Yeah, I got 30 minutes I, of light. And left. I got to shoot right now. You know, it's, it's 600 yards, it's 500 yards, whatever. I got to make this shot and then throw in potentially it's, you know, a few hundred yards from a private, a private land band boundary. Mm-hmm. So it's like. I need to drop that sucker, yeah. you know, as I quick as some, I can. I need to so, put a payload on that target. If I was, if, if I were going out elk hunting on a regular, I may be toting the 300 PRC just to, to anchor mm-hmm. yeah. that critter yeah. as quick as I could. But yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly, yeah. One, but another fold into the, into the blanket here. Yeah. That if you're doing exactly that, and we talked about how much energy advantage that 300 can have. Uh, and obviously it's got plenty of velocity to transfer that energy. That might be a good option. I would contend for me personally in that exact situation, I still might opt for the seven simply because I can shoot that seven better than I can yeah, shoot a 300. Sure. And you talked about recoil management here in the last seven, eight years, I've shot more animals off a tripod, kneeling, high kneeling, low kneeling than I have from the prone. Mm. And shoot a 300 PRC high kneeling off a tripod. I don't care how much that gun weighs. It's it, move, it moves. It's going to yeah. move yet. Yep. So, but that's, that's really, that's one of the points of contention that you're going to have to really sort through because you're right. I mean, you want to, you want to put as much energy and transfer it into that animal as quick as possible. And that big 30 cal, you have a bigger frontal diameter. The bullet's expanding. That frontal diameter is growing at an incredibly fast rate. Yep. Amazing energy transfer, tissue damage. It's just, a lot of good things. Hornady Security Mobilist Safes. Discover the ultimate solution for safeguarding your valuable equipment with Hornady Security Mobilist Safes. Offering an innovative modular design, Mobilist Safes can be easily transported and assembled piece by piece in any room. 
featuring a full square lock interior organizing system that maximizes storage space with countless storage configurations. Elevate your security with Mobilis safes from Hornady Security. What does Seth Swerzyk say? Say, oh, hold on, you don't get out of yeah. you don't get to ask us and not. Yeah. Like, what does well, Seth Swerzyk say? Everybody knows my answer, but I feel but, like. But put it put it in context, yeah. Seth, of your what, what is your task at hand? Here's why I choose the seven most of the time. Uh, I hunt uh, personally, passionate hunter. I mean, I'm getting after it on a personal note. Uh, and then took this job in marketing, and that kind of slowed my personal hunting down a little bit. Uh, didn't stop it altogether just because of the travel schedule and I am afforded the opportunity to go on some amazing adventures with some outdoor riders uh, during hunting season, which is, you know, the, the spoils of the job, I guess. Um, but I find myself in a, in a dead, like dead center in, on one side, it's personal hunts, public land, hiking in, getting it done. On the other side, it's, uh, you know, some guided hunts here or there, or uh, work industry hunts that maybe aren't guided, but are a little bit more, okay, we're going back to a lodge at the end of the night kind of thing. And then I'm also in the middle in that over here, it's how I grew up hunting, you know, spot and stock on the prairie mule deer, whitetail, antelope. But over here, about 50% of the time, maybe you get an elk hunt, African plains game, something like that. So I'm really in the middle in how I hunt and the game I'm hunting. And if I wanted to have one hammer, that would equally do the things on either side of this spectrum. For me, that's why the seven stands out so much. Joe, you mentioned it. You can kill an antelope with seven PRC. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's perfect. Works great. You can also kill an elk at maybe that extended range on the public land where you've put four days in and you've walked 10 miles a day and you're you know getting your butt handed to you and you get one shot. Well, the seven can do that too. And as much as I try to shoot, like, Judd mentioned, we try to get out there and shoot. And I, I shoot quite a bit, um, not as much as we'd like, but I can shoot that seven. I can go to the range. If I got three free hours to myself uh, to go to a range and, and I can take a host of guns and I can take that seven and I could shoot at every range I want to with that seven and, you know, let the bear cool and take it easy and shoot some other guns, uh, do some barricade practice while things are cooling. But three, four hours of shooting that seven, I can do that. That's no problem. I don't feel like I got hit by a truck. Sure. I've shot 300 PRC for an hour uh, doing like radar testing and could taste colors at the end of it. <laughs> so for me, the seven splits the spectrum of where I live and how I hunt and what I'm hunting so well. And I can shoot it. I can shoot it a lot. I can shoot. I shot uh, that. A uh, mule deer I shot here in Nebraska, once in a lifetime, public land, giant, high kneeling. And I watched that bullet punch him right through the shoulders. And having that moderate recoil with my shorter barrel, with the Ultra 5 suppressor, uh, I can build a gun, my, my personal rifle that I built, bipod suppressor loaded magazines like 10 pounds, 2 ounces. And you start taking off suppressor or bipod and it gets really light really quickly. Well. With 300, there's just too much recoil, in my opinion, to be shooting a 8 to 10 pound gun from a high kneeling off a tripod. Uh, likewise, or uphill. Uphill's a big one uh, where if you don't have really good fundamentals and recoil management, and even if you do, do. you're laying prone out shooting uphill That's or right. on a tripod, you're probably going to eat something. Ooh. And, I was going to uh, say, the scope might kiss your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's a conscious choice. I know this is going to happen, but I'm going to get this bullet in there. Sure. And sometimes you have to make that choice. And I feel like the 7 really blends it well, whereas the 6.5 could do 50% of the spectrum I live in really, really well. And it, I don't think it would do the other 50% as good as a 7, um, so or a 30 for that matter. So that's the reason I fall into the 7. I'm not restricted by range. On anything that I hunt, at any range I feel comfortable shooting, I'm not restricted on the game animals, I'm not too beat up by the recoil, I can run short, light setups, I let the bullet do the work, shorter barrel, toss those really efficient bullets out there at a moderate velocity, and the efficiency of the bullet does the rest. Yep. And I don't feel bad shooting that rifle, training with that rifle, practicing with that rifle, I don't feel it on the shoulder, I don't feel it in between my ears, for me, that 7 is just... Uh, a perfect blend of performance uh, for the spectrum that I hunt in. For the hunting? Yeah. Yep. 
No, I think that's a good way to a good way to sum it up. Um I've had the I've had the luxury of getting my family and children now and shooting and hunting and stuff. So it's been a neat um it gives me a little different perspective when looking at cartridge choices. So for me, if I boil it all down, if I'm gonna do any type of match shooting, long range match shooting, positional shooting, prone shooting, whatever, and I'm gonna shoot some volume and I wanna go deer, antelope hunting, and I need a lightweight system and I gotta have less recoil, six five is your That's that, your huckleberry. That, uh, every that's time. your huckleberry. If you're what you just articulated where look, man, I gotta be versatile, plain and simple. Then I mean seven is seven is your versatility cartridge. I will and then if you live out west or you live more northwestern, even maybe going up towards Alaska and you encounter bears or do any type of that hunting with elk or moose or that, 300 is your, I mean, it's just, yeah. it becomes evident then 300 is my choice. Mm-hmm. So if you could kind of break it down for me, that's been, you know, interesting to watch my wife shoot and my kids or whatever and which gun we go and yeah. I let them shoot them all and then let them pick. Yeah. And then why did you pick that one or in target shoot? Well, I like to shoot that one, but. Oh, I like this one and stocks yeah. and recoil and everything. So it's been what we articulated today is I've watched it play out in different facets in my personal hunting life. And it's, it's pretty cool to talk about it and then also get to see it. So, yeah, well, and you've talked about this and, and I'm just on the cusp of starting to see it myself, but it's probably funner to be in your shoes with the wife and the kids and, and get to see them make the choices and see them go on the hunts and see them be successful. You'd probably rather that then you shoot and you hunt. Oh, uh, hundred, absolutely. Yeah, I hear that it's, every it's time. It's more fun being in the spotting scope and then watching their little minds turning on because they don't, they don't have all the technical data that we do and all these drops and numbers. They just go shoot the gun and be like, dad, I like that one. Well, why do you like it? Well, it doesn't, you know, maybe Kaylee says, well, it doesn't kick at all. Or this, this stock fits all oh, Dad, This feels so good when I look through the scope and I close my eyes and open them. I'm just looking right there, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, that's and then awesome. when they harvest an animal with that, that only boosts their confidence more. So my go-to, I'm, I'm not changing. Yeah, that's my, that's <laughs> a, yeah. So it's just, it was a fun conversation because, yeah. I, and you guys will get to too. I, I, yeah. I sure hope and pray that you do because it's yeah. a blast. Looking forward to it. And I think, you know, Joe, to, to summarize, uh, or not summarize, but to add on to what you just said about, you know, getting your family into it. That just means you need one of each. You got to have, if you got to have a PRC, you got to have the whole PRC family so they can try them out. Or multiples Multiple of each. each. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, yep, Judge, we're talking about you picking right now. And I think the 6.5 for everything that you've talked about makes a lot of sense for you. Maybe in a couple of years, you do need a 7 and a yeah. 30. Well, yeah, I'm buying all the preference points. So, yeah, hopefully <laughs> I'm hunting elk some point. Yeah, we'll be... We're kind of all in the same boat, been chasing those for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I have a, in closing, or however you're going to wind it up, Seth, yeah. but I have one... Independent of me, I have a good friend of mine in Wyoming that drew a, a sheep tag in Wyoming this last fall. Mm-hmm. And he gets a hold of me. He has a 300, a lightweight 300 wind, by, wind mag, that a factory gun that he's had for a while and shot it. And he goes to try to shoot this gun and it. It shoots okay. I mean, I, I give him different ammo, you know, skews to try and he shoots it. But he knows he's going sheep hunting, right? And he knows it may be 100 yards and it may be 600 yards. You, you just don't, you don't know. And when you get that opportunity, you have to make it count. So I said, hey, man, how about I'll bring you, I have a 6.5 PRC. It'd be awesome. It's lightweight. It shoots great. It would be a really good choice for sheep hunting. You try it. You let me know. You don't have to, no skin off my back. You try it, see what you think. And he took this gun and he went out and he shot it at the range. And I gave him the, you know, how to run the, the optic and stuff. And he's like, this is, this is awesome. I never knew this existed. And then took that sheep hunting because he's, guys, he's a, he's a Wyoming guy that grew up hunting. He gets within 200 yards. He shoots his animal for meat, whatever he's doing. And he go, I mean, it's, it's what he does, Yep. but he drew the sheep tag and he took this gun hunting and he's like, at the very end, he summarized it as, Hey man, thank you for letting me do that. I don't know that I would have accomplished the hunt the way it turned out if I didn't have that tool wow. to use. Cause he got down to the, he hunted his butt off and got down to the end and the sheep were 500 and like. 60 or 80 yards away and he had to get his pack and and shoot build the a position build and a position make a good and shot make a shot and the wind was blowing so i mean it, it it drove home to me like okay our how we talk about what tools and what you're doing and what you need to do 
go get that tool. And Randy's hunt like drove that home again to me, independent of me. I wasn't even there. I just said, Hey, here's an option. And he yeah. was like, he told me at the end, like, thank you. I owe you. Cause I don't know that this would have turned out the way it did. So I was That's like, awesome. That makes me feel really good as a engineer designer, where you want to call it of a, you know, bullet yeah. and ammo company. Uh, yep. Yeah, that, that's what we try to do. You know, Absolutely. That's what we're, we're hunters and users ourselves. So that's what we try to do for ourselves and translates to stories like that. Yeah. What a so, success story. Well, that is a great way to close this out is the PRC, uh, great tools to put in your toolbox and some tools can do other jobs. Uh, and a lot of the, I mean, a lot of tool crossover, but you got to decide, you know, what tool is right for you for what job you're doing. And we've got a PRC cartridge that can do almost any of them. We get a lot of suggestions for other PRC cartridges. So listeners, if you're out there, uh, not like we're taking active suggestions, but I personally would like to hear if you drop a comment here on YouTube, um, what would you like to see? 25 PRC. We get a lot of suggestions for that. 277, 338 PRC. Uh, If there's a PRC cartridge not in the family that you'd like to see, I'd be curious to hear what that is, you know, straight from the consumer. Um, cause yeah, might be, might be something interesting and you never know. It might just end up being the next best cartridge. Sure. Well, yeah. Anything else to, to add to the PRC discussion and how you guys pare it down to what you're picking and, and, you know, in summary, we already talked about it, but in summary, there's tools that do a lot of the jobs. Just pick the right tool for the job. You have to start with the end goal. What's my end goal? And then work backward mm-hmm. and you'll find yourself with a pretty good, you know, idea. And then like Joe mentioned earlier. It's, there's a, you, know, you can do a lot of things with just the one or whatever. Like you're in a good spot where you can't make a wrong choice. That's what we need to drive home. Yep. Yeah. I, I would say just from my perspective in closing, even outside of the PRC line, there are a tremendous amount of cartridges that are excellent, do a great job. Oh, what, of course. Whether you have a PRC or you don't, man, how can, how can he not like it? You have to respect it. It's yeah. like just what the PRC line of cartridges does. It's just, you can't not like it. Yeah. The capability out of factory ammo and factory rifles is just, it's, it's unrivaled is what it is. 100%. I mean, yeah. You might be able to go get a rifle in a traditional chambering and get some ammo that'll give you similar performance, but it's a gamble. Uh, Cause you don't, the chamber dimensions are often leave a lot to be desired. The bullet design the bullet you, has limitations. The bullets you can shoot, twist rates of the barrel, all of those things are already designed into the PRCs where it's just plug and play. Yes, yeah, sir. Awesome, guys. Well, I know it's January still, but it's not too early to start thinking about your fall. You know, as we start getting into application season and putting in for points, it's Arizona open. Elks coming up. Arizona deadline's coming up. Wyoming is coming up the end of January. So, yeah, I mean, I've already, I was having the conversation with the kids the other night at dinner. Yeah. Because they're all getting of age. Like, okay, who who wants to hunt what? Because we got to start planning for, you know, get, trying to get tags. Yep. So it's not just tag season. It's rifle season. Pick out something. If, you know, treat yourself. You deserve it. Uh, it's 2024. And uh, hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, make a better decision. And guys, I really do appreciate your input. Joe is Pontius Joe. They're all great. And curious Judd of which one do I pick? Uh, oh boy. And incredibly biased Seth. Hopefully that was helpful to at least a few people. Well, good. Well, I appreciate being here, Seth. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Yeah, a lot of fun. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. Found it, if nothing else, entertaining, uh, but more so helpful in choosing which PRC cartridge is right for you. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.